Okay? Yes. Good to see you all again, students. So we had in the last session talked about the dihydrid cross. I'm sure you've seen the video carefully. I've gone through the notes. Just a quick fire recap of what we had done in the previous session. If you remember, Mendel had selected a yellow ground and a green wrinkled plant. Yellow round, capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R. Green wrinkled, small Y, small Y, small R, small R. Gametes obtained from them were capital Y, capital R and small Y, small R. When capital Y, capital R, small Y, small R are brought together, in the F1 generation, the plant produces yellow round in which you will have capital Y, small Y, capital R, small R. Capital Y will become dominant over small Y. Capital R will become dominant over small R. And what we get is a yellow round plant. Now, this is the F1 generation. When it forms gametes, I hope you remember, law of segregation and purity of gametes, what gametes are formed here? You have capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, and when the gametes are formed, so you will have capital Y, capital R, capital Y, small r, small y, capital R, and small y, small r. Four types of gametes are formed. Here we have the male gametes, here we have the female gametes, and if you remember, when a checkerboard method is made, you will have nine plants which are having at least one capital Y and one capital R. So these are yellow and brown. Three plants are having capital Y, but small R, small R, small R, small R, small R, small R. Small R. So these three are yellow and wrinkled. Three plants are small Y, small Y, capital R, capital R. Small y, small y, capital R, small r, small y, small y, capital R, small r. So three plants are having capital R, so means they are round, but small y, small y in all of them, so means these are wrinkled. And one plant is small y, small y, small r, small r, that means this is green and wrinkled. So you've got nine yellow and round, three yellow and wrinkled, three green and round, one green and wrinkled, so you get a dihybrid phenotypic ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, which is called as Mendel's dihybrid ratio. Now, depending on this dihybrid ratio, Mendel had given his third law, law of independent assortment. And I'm sure you all remember, sir, suppose here we have capital Y, here we have capital R, here we have capital Y, here we have capital R. So these are your parents. And here you have small y, small y, and here you have small r, small r, these again are your parents. From these parents, the gamete form will be capital Y, capital R, which is one type of gamete here, and small y, small y, small r, small r, which is the other gamete formed over here. And this became capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, which is the F1 generation. When it will form gametes to produce F2 generation, you can have a combination of capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, or you may have a combination of small y, sorry, capital Y, small r, and small y, capital R. And when small y, capital R fuses with another small y, capital R, what does it form? So small y, small y, capital R, capital R, which is green and round and similarly when capital Y small r fuses with another capital Y small r it forms a capital Y capital Y small r small r that is yellow and wrinkled so what is this called as? this is called as the law of independent assortment which has taken place so this is the law of independent assortment
short way, what was the original combination in the parent? Capital Y, capital R, capital Y, capital R, capital Y, capital R, small Y, small R, small Y, small R. What is the new combination that we have got? We have got capital Y, small Y, capital capital Y, capital Y, small R, small R, small Y, small Y, capital R, capital R. So you have got yellow and wrinkled, green and round, which is called as law of independent assortment taking place. Now, is law of independent assortment universally true? Now, Mendel was lucky that the two traits that he studied, yellow and round, green and wrinkled, these characteristics or these genes were found on different chromosomes. Suppose we had a combination of capital Y and capital R found on the same chromosome and small y and small r found on the same chromosome. Then what would have happened? Then you would have got You would have got capital Y, capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, small y, small r found on the same chromosome. The gamete formed would have been capital Y, capital R, small y, small r. That means these two genes are together and sir, when they will form gamete, what gamete will you get sir? You will get capital Y, capital R and you will get small y small r which means a small y small r will fuse with another small y small r to form green and wrinkled only similarly capital y capital r will fuse with another capital y capital r to form a yellow and round only which means independent assortment will not take place you will not get yellow and wrinkled you will not get green and round and such genes are called as linked genes because these genes are linked on the same chromosome these are called as linked genes and linked genes will not show independent assortment so Mendel's third law, law of independent assortment is not universally true because linked genes do not show independent assortment. Mendel did not know about this. Mendel was very lucky that there were no linked genes of all the seven pairs of contrasting characteristics. All the seven pairs of contrasting characteristics were found on seven different chromosomes. Hence, he could establish law of independent assortment. But if the genes were linked together, then independent assortment would have not taken place. So please remember, from each point of view, which law is not universally true? Mendel's third law, law of independent assortment is not universally true. Because if genes are linked, then linked genes will not show independent assortment. This was what we had done in the last session and we had analyzed the concept of Mendelism and then post Mendel we got lots of deviations from Mendel's ratios which are called as gene interaction. After the rediscovery of Mendel's laws, many scientists performed experiments on different plants and animals and many exceptions or deviations to the Mendel's ratio were observed. And on the basis of these observations, different patterns of inheritance or gene interactions were discovered and these different patterns of inheritance or gene interactions are called as post-Mendelian genetics, also called as neo-Mendelian genetics. So everything after Mendel and new laws which were discovered were called as post-Mendelian genetics or neo-Mendelian genetics. What do you mean by this law? The phenotypic expression of a gene can be modified or influenced by other genes. Ek gene ka expression dusre gene se influence ho sakta hai and these kind of gene interactions are called as post-Mendelian 
for new Mendelian interaction. Let's see which these interactions were. So you have intragenic, intragenic also called interallelic. So these are two homologous chromosomes or unke jo genes hai. These two genes found on homologous chromosomes are called as alleles. And in alleles ke beech mein jo interaction hota hai, which is called as intragenic, also called as interallelic gene interaction or intragenic interallelic occurring between alleles of the same gene, those interactions are called as intragenic interaction. Never I will straight away, which are these interactions? You have incomplete dominance, you have co-dominance and you have multiple allelism. Incomplete dominance, co-dominance and multiple allelism are the three kinds of intragenic, also called as interallelic interaction. Then you have intergenic interaction. Uh, these are two alleles and these are two different alleles found on a different pair of chromosomes. And in genes ke beech mein interaction hota hai. So these are interactions between non-allelic genes. These are allelic genes. These are non-allelic genes. Or in ke beech mein interaction hota hai. Then these are called as intergenic or non-allelic interaction. Which are interactions between alleles of different genes found on different chromosomes. So ye intragenic hai, ye intergenic hai. Which are the intergenic interactions? You have pleiotropy, polygenes, epistasis, supplementary genes and complementary genes. Once again, which are the intergenic interactions? Pleiotropy, polygenes, epistasis, supplementary genes and complementary genes are the intergenic or non-allelic interactions. So, these are all the new Mendelian or new Mendelian interactions. Let's start first right now with intragenic interaction. You have incomplete dominance, you have co-dominance and you have multiple allelism. Uh, first, we go into the concept called as Incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance may dhyan to sunna all of you. In incomplete dominance, both the genes of an allelomorphic pair express themselves partially. So, two genes are, unke beech mein, ek gene dominant, ek gene recessive, aisa nahi hota hai. Both genes express themselves. So, there is no dominance resistiveness, both genes are expressing themselves partially and one gene does not suppress the expression of the other completely, hence the pair is not one dominant, one recessive, rather in such cases there is an intermediate expression in the F1 hybrid. So, F1 hybrid ke under kya aega? Dominant character bhi nahi aega, recessive character bhi nahi aega, Dono ka mixture ho ke a beach wala appearance aega, a middle appearance and intermediate expression is found in F1 hybrids. Let's see this with an example. Suppose we have a 4 o'clock plant, also called as miraculous jala. Once again, 4 o'clock plant, that is miraculous jala. And another example, the dog flower snapdragon plant, which is called as antirhizus major. The dog flower or snapdragon plant, which is called as antirhizus major, what do we find in these plants? So, in photoglot plant, Mirabilis jalapa, in dog flower snapdragon antirhizus major, suppose you have a red flowered plant and you have a white flowered plant then red flower is genotypically capital R capital R 
व्हाइट फ्लावर जीरोटैक्टिकली स्मॉलर स्मॉलर एंड उसमें से गैमिट बनेगा कैपिटल आर इसमें से गैमिट बनेगा स्मॉल आर एंड वेन दे कम टूगेदर एफ वन जनरेशन हैज कैपिटल आर स्मॉल आर एंड द हाइब्रिड लाइक मेंडल मोरो हाइब्रिड रेशियो बट इफ यू रिमेम्बर मेंडल मोरो हाइब्रिड रेशियो कैपिटल आर बिकम कंप्लीटली डॉमिनेट ओवर स्मॉल आर एंड रेड कलर फ्लावर वुड बी प्रोड्यूस बट इफ मेरा और डॉक फ्लावर स्नैप ड्रैगन कैपिटल आर एक्सप्रेसिस इट्सेल्फ स्मॉल आर आल्सो एक्सप्रेसिस इट्सेल्फ बाय द वे कलर ऑफ फ्लावर इज फॉर्म बाय अ पिगमेंट कॉल्ड एज एंथोसियानी सो कैपिटल आर विल फॉर्म रेड कलर एंथोसियानी स्मॉल आर विल फॉर्म व्हाइट कलर एंथोसियानी and red color and white color will mix with each other to now form a pink anthocyanin flower and pink color is formed so sir neither did we get red color nor we got white color we got an intermediate color which is a pink color flower and that pink color is an example of incomplete dominance so what is the color of the flower you got sir pink and what is this an example of incomplete dominance now pink color is an intermediate expression with f1 generation form gamete it will form capital r small r male gamete capital r small r female gamete and f1 is self to produce f2 generation self pollination the f2 generation dhyan se sunna capital r capital r will form a red flower capital r small r will form a pink flower capital r small r will produce a pink flower and small r small r will produce a white flower so we get one red two pink and one white so what is the phenotypic ratio you got one red two pink one white so a phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 if you remember in mendel's monohybrid ratio you would get 3 is to 1 your what are we getting 1 is to 2 is to 1 and what will be the genotypic ratio you got one capital r capital r two capital r small r and one small r small r so the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 golden word the phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so both phenotypic and genotypic ratios are 1 is to 2 is to 1 in case of incomplete dominance so they may ask you from a neat point of view in which kind of gene interaction the phenotypic and genotypic ratios are identical the answer is incomplete dominance in which the phenotypic and genotypic ratios are identical 1 is to 2 is to 1 so this is incomplete dominance found in four of your plant and found in snap dragon or the dog flower mainly found in kingdom plantae in kingdom animalae you have something similar called as co-dominance so what is co-dominance in co-dominance both the genes of an allelomorphic pair express themselves equally in the f1 hybrid so again both genes are expressing themselves in the f1 hybrid but such genes express themselves independently either is present together in hybrids so so both of them express independently so so incomplete dominance mein kya tha you got dominant and recessive both dominant and recessive express themselves and the characteristic is intermediate so beach wala characteristic aata hai beach wala characteristic aayega then it is incomplete dominance 
but in core dominance, both dominant and recessive character express themselves independently. Means they don't produce a intermediate expression. Which one expression ni aata hai? Dominant and recessive character saath saath aate hai. They come independently together. To understand this, let's take an example. So you have a classical case of core dominance, coat color and cattle. Coat color and cattle, a cattle has a red coat and is bred with another cattle which is a white coat. Now red coated cattle is genotypically capital R capital R. White one, mind my words, is not small r small r, it is capital W capital W. So capital R capital R is bred with capital W capital W which will be the Jackie form here, capital R and capital W. And capital R now fuses with capital W or capital R fuses with capital W and so what we get is a variety called as a Rowan coat. So Rowan coat me kya aata hai? It is a spotted animal. It's got spots in it. It has got a red color coat with white color patches or a white color coat with red color patches. So what is this? Uh, uh, both capital R and capital W express themselves but sir, does red and white mix together to form pink color cattle? No, not pink color cattle. Capital R se banta hai red coat. Capital W se banta hai white patches or white coat with red patches. And sir, that means capital R, capital W are expressing together. But they are not blending to form pink. They are expressing independently and that kind of dominance is called as, or expression is called as co-dominance. So sir, co-dominance ke enter, you got capital R, capital W, capital R, capital W and you are having F1 generation with Rowan coat that is red colored coat with white color patch or white color coat with red color patch and these are called as Rowan. If Rowans are allowed to breed with each other, check here, F1 is now cross to produce F2 generation. Then what will be the gametes you will get? You will get capital R, capital W, you will get capital R, capital W, and capital R, capital R will come together to form red color, capital R, capital W will come to form Rowan code, Capital W capital R will again come to form Rowan coat and capital W with capital W will form white coat. So what are we having sir? One red, two Rowans, one white. So what is the phenotypic ratio? One red, two Rowans, one white. What is the genotypic ratio? One capital R capital R. 2 capital R capital W and 1 capital W capital W. So what is the genotypic ratio? 1 is to 2 is to 1. Genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. What is the phenotypic ratio? 1 red, 2 rowans, 1 white. What is the genotypic ratio? 1 capital R capital R, 2 capital R capital W and 1 capital W capital W so the phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 hey, which means in both co-dominant and incomplete dominant the phenotypic and genotypic ratios are identical 1 is to 2 is to 1 so, so a neat point of view say in which kind of gene interaction phenotypic and genotypic ratios are identical in examples of co-dominance and incomplete dominance the phenotypic and genotypic ratios are identical they are 1 is to 2 is to 1. So sir this is the kind of uh, deviation from Mendel's law and sir 
विच मीन्स ये बहुत ध्यान से सुनना मेंडल्स फर्स्ट लॉ लॉ ऑफ डोमिनेंस पी प्लांट शोज लॉ ऑफ डोमिनेंस फॉर ऑल सेवन कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक बट इन केस ऑफ इनकम्प्लीट डोमिनेंस एंड को डोमिनेंस वट इड वी गेट इन केस ऑफ इनकम्प्लीट डोमिनेंस रेड एंड व्हाइट प्रोड्यूस द पिंक कलर इन केस ऑफ को डोमिनेंस रेड एंड व्हाइट प्रोड्यूस द रोन कलर which means there was no complete dominance and no complete recessiveness in other words mendel's first law law of dominance was not observed which means mendel's law of dominance is not universally true so sabse crucial ye neat point of view which of mendel's law is universally true Mendel's first law, law of dominance, is not universally true because of incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Mendel's third law, as we did today, law of independent assortment, is not universally true. If the genes are linked on the same chromosome, they will not show independent assortment. So Mendel's third law, law of independent assortment, is not universally true. Which means only Mendel's second law, law of segregation and purity of gametes, is universally true. So, which of Mendel's three laws is universally true? The second law, law of segregation and purity of gametes, is universally true. The first law, law of dominance, is not true. Universally true because of co-dominance and incomplete dominance. Mendel's third law, law of independent assortment, is not universally true because linked genes on the same chromosome do not show independent assortment. So only Mendel's second law, law of segregation and purity of gametes, is universally true. I hope you all have understood that. Good. So now that we have analyzed this. Then comes another example of co-dominance. Uh, what do we see here, sir? In case of human blood groups, human blood groups के अंदर we have the ABO blood group which is controlled by the gene called capital I. तो gene capital I से ABO blood group होता है. Let's see this carefully. This is a cell. सेल के अंदर है न्यूक्लियस और न्यूक्लियस के अंदर है क्रोमोसोम्स एंड ऑन द क्रोमोसोम्स वी हैव 23 पेयर्स ऑफ क्रोमोसोम्स ऑन द क्रोमोसोम वी हैव थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ अलीज तो अलीज तीन काइंड के होते हैं ब्लड ग्रुप के लिए यू हैव आई कैपिटल ए आई कैपिटल ए I capital B and small. So which are the three alleles? You have I capital A, I capital B and small. I. There are three alleles for blood groups. Alleles three are, but we are diploid organisms, so we will show any two of these three alleles. So any of the three alleles, we say two alleles have our pass. So suppose you have I capital A. And small i, i capital A becomes dominant over small i, and i capital A will express. So what will i capital A do? It will undergo the gene will undergo transcription and translation to form a protein, and that protein will now add with the sugar. A sugar called as the oligosaccharide. So I capital A say a protein maneva which will attach to the sugar called as the oligosaccharide and come on the surface of the cell and will form a protein called as A protein which is now called A antigen. तो I capital A से A protein और A antigen बनता है। You have another allele 
Suppose you have I capital B small i. I capital B small i, I capital B will form a protein and that protein will combine with a sugar and will come on the surface and form a protein called as B protein or B antigen. So what does I capital A small i form? A antigen. What does I capital B small i form? B antigen. But suppose you have I capital A and I capital B as your two elements, then I A will express independently to form A antigen. I B will express independently to form B antigen and your blood group becomes A B blood group. So what is A B blood group? An example of Co-dominance. I A से A group बनता है, I B से B group बनता है, and A group B group together is now blood group A B of a person. So what is that an example of co-dominance? So that is also an example of co-dominance. And sir, you have another unique condition. If you have small i small i, if you have small i small i, then Small i, small i, both are receptive genes, which means small i will not form any protein. So, if the protein is made, small i, small i is made, it will not form any protein. Which means, on the surface of the RBC, neither a nor b group proteins are produced, and which means the blood group will be neither a nor b nor a b. And that is now called as O blood. So all of us belong to one of these three, or rather these four blood groups. You are either A or B or AB or O. So what is your blood group? If it's I capital A small i, then you would have A group. I capital B small i, you would have B group. If you have a I capital A I capital B you will have A B blood group and you have small i small i you will have O blood group. So sir, ये I capital A I capital B अगर दोनों साथ में होंगे then A will express independently B will express independently and you will get A B blood group. What is that a beautiful example of co-dominance? So sir, Rowan quotes in case of cattle are co-dominant, AB blood group in case of humans are example of co-dominant. And sir, what are the different kinds of blood groups that we have? So suppose we have allele from parent 1, I capital A, allele from parent 2, I capital A. Then, dono mein se ek ek allele aata hai, I capital A, I capital A, when they fuse, genotype of the offspring will become I capital A, I capital A and the blood group of the person will become A. I capital A, I capital A produces A blood group. Uh, suppose you have I capital A as allele from parent 1, I capital B as allele from parent 2, then your genotype of the offspring will become I capital A, I capital B and I capital A, I capital B will show co-dominance and your blood group will become AB. Suppose you have I capital A from one parent and I capital sorry, small i from the other parent, then I capital A small i will become the genotype of the offspring in which I capital A will become dominant over small i and your blood group will become A. If you have I capital B from one parent and I capital A from the other parent, then the genotype will become I capital A, I capital B. Uh, it's not because this is just the reverse. From parent 1 you got I capital A, from parent 2 you got I capital B, and here you got from parent 1 I capital B, from parent 2 I capital A, chahe wo AB ho ya BA. Eventually, 
the zero tag of the offspring is I capital A, I capital B, I capital A, I capital B, and the blood group will become AB or AB. So, sir, this example here is just the same to be as striking it out. So, what is the zero tag you got? I capital A, I capital B, I capital A, I capital B, and this is AB, AB. So, zero tag is I capital A, I capital B, zero tag is AB, AB. So, sir, this is an example of code of uh, suppose you have I capital B from one parent, I capital B from the other parent, then you have I capital B, I capital B, which will produce B blood. Suppose you have I capital B from first parent, small i from the second parent, then I capital B, small i will again produce B blood group, in which I capital B will become dominant over small i and produce B blood. Suppose you have small i from one parent, small i from the other parent, then your genotype of the offspring is small i, small i, which will produce O blood. Good in words, how many types of genotypes are possible and how many types of phenotypes are possible? So, genotypes confirm the who is I capital A, I capital A, I capital A, small i, I capital B, I capital B, I capital B, small i, I capital A, I capital A forming A group, I capital A, I small i producing A group, I capital B, I capital B producing B group, I capital B, small i producing B group, and you've got I capital A, I capital B, which shows co dominance to produce AB blood group, and small i, small i forming O blood. So, how many types of genotypes we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which are the 6 genotypes? I capital A, I capital A, I capital A, I capital B, I capital A small i, I capital B, I capital B, I capital B small i, and small i small i are the 6 types of genotypes. And how many types of phenotypes do we get? We have A group, we have B group, we have AB group and we have O group. So A, B, AB and O are the four different types of phenotypes. So how many genotypes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different types of genotypes and 1, 2, 3 and 4 different types of phenotypes. So in human blood group, 6 types of genotypes and two types of phenotypes are present, beautiful example of co-dominance here. And we have a very important logic, how does dominance take place? So sir, what is the concept of dominance? Uh, suppose we have two normal genes, say AG, AG, and both genes are identical and they are normal genes. Normal genes are also called as wild genes. So A gene is normal which is also called wild and if it is AA, both genes will express themselves to produce a normal protein. So say normal protein manda hai. But suppose this gene here A undergoes a mutation then this mutated gene we represent now as small a and the mutated gene is now undergone a mutation so suppose this produces a less efficient enzyme it's a protein synthesis say transcription translation say enzyme is there and this enzyme is less efficient or it is a non-functional enzyme so the enzyme is produced, but this chain of amino acids in it has undergone a mutation. Because the gene has undergone mutation, its ATG sequence is mutated. Because its ATG sequence is mutated, it will produce an enzyme which is different from the normal enzyme. So that is a non-functional enzyme. Or if the gene undergoes such a bad mutation that this gene cannot undergo transcription translation. 
प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस ही नहीं होता है दैट मीन्स इट डज नॉट प्रोड्यूस एनी एंजाइम एट ऑल सो वट 